welcome to Disney Movie Stack. It's me, your host, Ray Goots, and this week we got fun and fancy free here on the podcast with Kunal Aurora. Now, how I, I, how how did I ever meet Kunal? I'll give you some background. Um, back in the day at the Lantern, Khalees Hawkins had a show with Amanda Baramke on Fridays, sometimes Tuesdays, sometimes Wednesdays, sometimes whenever they felt like it. And um, I would do that show a lot. And at one point, she got a boyfriend, and he was Kunal Aurora. And I met him there, and he was also doing shows on Long Island and LOL, and I would see him at those places. And eventually, he broke up with Khalees, but I kept seeing him around. And he became a good friend of mine. And uh, so I said, you know, what what better thing to do to one of my good friends than make them watch Fun and Fancy Free? <laughs> because we're at the halfway point. Of the shitty movies. After this, there's two more weeks. And we're back into the classics. With Cinderella, which I recorded with Camille Theobald a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, we're almost there. We're almost at, We're almost in the clear of these movies. This movie is on Disney+, Plus, fun and fancy free. So if you're feeling f- fun and fancy free, and you want to check this out before listening to the podcast, it's on there. You can You can watch it, so... You know, why don't you log off? And give you get yourself. Shut up, Jasmine just sneezed, and get yourself some of that fucking fun and fancy free bullshit right there and there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say this week. Uh, it's Christmas time. I got Christmas music going on in the house. Um, next week I might drop super early because I'm going to Los Angeles, so I might actually just drop it on a Monday. I, I want to try the uh, the timing technique. There's like a there's like a thing where you can schedule when the podcast will drop on my uh, on the service I use, but I don't know if I trust it yet. So maybe I'll just drop it. Well, I mean it's melody time. It's not like people are gonna be dying to listen to that on a it's fucking melody time, which is probably even more obscure. To make my music, but or fun and fancy free. Nevertheless, we're moving forward. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with Canal and Fun and Fancy Free, now available on Disney+. Plus. All right. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. We're the graveyard tramps. We rise from our graves <laughs> to make men our slaves. When guys climb in our coffins, they never come back. When the moon comes up, we'll take you down. We get our hands on every stiff in the joint. Graveyard Tramps. Rated R. Absolutely no one under 17 admitted without parent or certified adult guardian. Hey guys, welcome back to Disney Movie Stack. I'm, I'm Ray Goots, again your host, and I'm here with Canal Aurora. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for doing the show. Sure. And we watched um, Fun and Fancy Free, which is again the, another movie in the weird period between Dumb, not the Dumbo, fuck, between Bambi and Cinderella. But real quick, before we get into that, a uh, case, Canal. Yeah. Canal. Mm. How long are you doing stand up? Uh, just past ten years. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And what got you into it? Uh, a buddy of mine was like, you should get into comedy. He's like, I think you'd be really good at it. And I was like, yeah, I got no direction. <laughs> yeah, I'll do, I'll do it. Yeah. And now it's been 10 years. And I think he, we're still like, he's one of my best friends still. Mm-hmm. And, was he a comic? No, no, he's not. Okay. I mean, I and I just, um, like thinking about these past 10 years, I've never wished I didn't listen to somebody in my life. <laughs> <laughs> It's a rough road, huh? Rough road, so it's rough. A, yeah, very. But rough. I mean, ultimately, I love it. So, I mean, it led you. To, it led you to this movie. So, absolutely. Well, listen, it led me to you. Yeah, which I like. Okay, this movie, not so much. Okay, we're gonna yeah. get to it in a moment. I want to. Sure. I want to. I want to get to know you a little bit more. Sure. Uh, tell me about your. Ch- uh, you grew up in Flushing. Yes. Which is right down the road from Astoria. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Tell me about your childhood a little bit. I was a. Um, like in terms of what, just in general, I watched yeah, a lot. Of, I watched a lot of TV, man. You watched like, a lot of TV. That's we're talking like ten hours a day. Okay, <laughs> that's an obscene amount, right? Yeah. Did you play video games a lot too? I did, but like I think TV was mostly my jam. Yeah, you were like shut the game off. We gotta get back. Yeah, I mean, like I didn't. I I mean, I play. There's a couple games I played, like Zelda. Huge Zelda fan. You okay, know this. Yeah. But um, mostly my jam was TV. Did you have the? I had like the channel 
lineups memorized. Like I yes. could tell you right now it was on Channel 7 uh-huh. in 88. Like who's the boss was at 8 o'clock. Right. Uh, and then d- like the 30 something was at 10 o'clock. You right. know, I didn't watch it. I'm like, that's 30 something time. Absolutely. Yeah. Of did, course. Did you, you're like one of those. Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? I I would go from, I could tell you from 3 PM mm-hmm. to 11 PM. Oh yeah. I used to know the channel. Even if I didn't watch these channels, yeah. I knew the schedules. Of course. Cause I was angry that they didn't have cartoons on the other channels. I was right. Like, one day they're all, now they, none of them have cartoons. Right. But, but I'm, I'm still pissed. Weekend, uh, the, like the WB afternoon. Okay, yeah, the cartoons. Yeah. Four thirty was always the Batman. Was Batman when the it Batman? Moved. Yes, right. But it, three o'clock, it started like, you know how um, they had TGIF. Mm-hmm. They every like they had four cartoons from three to five. That was Disney after. That was Disney, right? Yes. There was Bonkers. Mm-hmm. There was uh, I mean, I'm Darkwing Duck at one point. These are different periods, yeah. right? You know, because uh, my memory. the four thirty show was always the hot show. Yes, and the right. three o'clock show was the show that you could tell Disney was just done with. Yeah, Aladdin, it's the none. series. Yes. Yeah. Um, at one, Gargoyles? Gargoyles is actually, I'm so happy you brought that up. Yeah. That was my favorite cartoon. That's actually going to be the whole series on Disney+. Plus. That's incredible. Which I think is going to lead to everyone demanding they bring that show back. Because a lot of people have not seen that show. Well, Jordan Peele said he's working on it. Oh, he is? Yeah. Okay. An animated version or live action? I hope to God it's animated. I don't want to see a live action. I, I don't want to see live action Gargoyles. It's going to be live action. I, I mean, it probably will, but I don't want to see live action. I know. That's but seen. that's like the one. See, the weird thing, uh, and I'm going to ask you uh, this question. But the weird thing about Disney is Disney does not give a fuck about, like, even if it has a money making property, if right. they're just not, or something that people like, if it's not making the money they want, they have no problem just putting it on a shelf yeah. and being like, see you later. Right, absolutely. Yeah. When yeah. you own, this is the thing, they can fail as much as they want to. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then they'll just be like, all right, this is gone. And the few people that loved it, They'll be like, you'll get this when we feel like giving this to you. Yeah. And then when they bring yeah. it back, people yeah. like my friends are going ballistic that they're going to be able to watch this on Disney+. Plus. Right. It's like the, uh, <laughs> that you know, when they started putting things in the vault. Yeah. 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 It's locked away in the vault. You have the key, Disney. Yeah. Cut the nonsense. What, that, what, what would annoy me is like I, I didn't see Oliver and Company in theaters when I was mm. a kid. I was like, well, I'll get the VHS tape. And then they decided we're not putting it out on VHS. Right. Yeah. And I didn't see the movie until this summer. When I'm 38 years old. I mean, the old. company's full of monsters. Let's yeah. Say. It's, it's funny like if, how like it's about uh, heroes, you yeah. know what I mean? But they're the monsters. Yeah. It's like, we don't want you to have this movie yet. You can go fuck yourself. Right. You're not getting it yet. We yeah. don't like it that... We didn't like it as much as you liked it, so you're right. not getting it. But let, let me ask you, was Disney... So we already... I think we already answered this, but I'll ask you, was Disney a big part of your childhood? Did you watch a lot of Disney movies? I mean, in terms of Disney movies... Yeah, or Disney TV shows. We already know yeah. Gargoyles. I mean, t- I didn't even know Gargoyles was a Disney show. Really, up until now? Up until right now. Seriously. Seriously. Because it, well, it, was, it was their answer to the Batman series, I feel like. Well, and it was... The first couple seasons of Gargoyles was probably one of the best animated storylines I've seen in a long time. Yeah. I don't think anything... I mean, you got nostalgia mixed in with it now because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm much older. But when I was younger, I was like, this is an incredible storyline. Yeah. I mean, I mean everyone talked about talks about yeah. it. I didn't watch it because I think it was on against Batman, so I would still be watching Batman. Oh no no no! Yeah. Gargoyles was so okay. much. I think at one point it was better than Batman. I think I think you might be right. Yeah, yeah. I think people talk about because they show. mixed in not only like this whole story that they came up with, but also they added so many Shakespearean elements. Yeah, that you're like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It was a really and they, I, I heard it ended with like no resolution. Um, then they brought it back on ABC. Yes, is the Goliath, but nobody liked that version. Oh, that version was terrible, poorly yeah. written. Everything was like, "What are we doing here?" I I feel like if they ever if they do bring back Our Girls is Animated, it's gonna be in that you, you know the Disney XD channel. Yeah, and it's gonna be like that fucking. Did you see like uh, Teen Titans Go? It's gonna be like this weird art style. I didn't like it. I, I, like, I feel like that's what Gargoyles is going to be. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm back. saying. They're not. You know what? I never realized this. You got to be careful when you're doing a cartoon. You got to be careful who the animators are. Yeah. Who's doing the storyboarding? All those things. Those are massively important things. Like I just watched. Uh, I finished um, Voltron mm-hmm. on Netflix. Okay. Have you seen it? No, no. I've been meaning to, but I just eight never seasons. It. Okay. Some episodes. Some seasons are like ten episodes. Some are like fifteen. Mm-hmm. And it's probably of of a 2019 story. Yeah. Probably some of the. It's probably one of the best written animated series. Okay. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. In terms, in general, and on Netflix, I'd say it's like neck and neck with Castlevania. 
Oh wow, okay. I, yeah. I got to watch both. I, yeah. I can't sit down and you watch. Know, for a guy who loves animation, you're really slacking here. <laughs> really <laughs> haven't watched really haven't really gotten to Gargoyles. Didn't watch Voltron. <laughs> haven't I, watched Castlevania. Ha- well, Castlevania is also video games, right? That I ventures know. into that, your territory. The, I'm completely. I don't even know what I'm doing here anymore. Yeah, I know. I you should, should be running. This should this be your podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm very upset with you. Yeah, I I watched Fantasia six times, but not yeah. Gargoyles. Yet. I'm. <laughs> you know what? I'm not disappointed. I'm just a little upset. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's just hard for me to sit down with Netflix. I don't know why. Why? But there's, I just, this is going to sound weird, but uh. there's like, I feel like there's more, when it's on a regular network, mm-hmm. I feel like it's more real. I don't know. I don't know why. It, and that's not true at all. No. Yeah. No, that's that. But I feel like. We, you know, there's the thing. There is a lot of animation on Netflix, mm-hmm. right? There's a lot of everything. Yeah. But, Castlevania is really dark and yeah. well done. Mm-hmm. Voltron is, pro- you know, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I think it's better than the original. Well, the original doesn't hold up at all. Okay, well, then have you tried to watch the original? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't. Do, do you know the story with the original? No. They got the rights to all these cartoons, but nobody in the office spoke Japanese. Yeah. So they would just watch them. Take out this. There's a lot of sex and cursing. I have the original Japanese episodes, by the way. I mm-hmm. heard those are good. I have them. Yeah. I, somewhere in my fucking shelves. Right. Um. But they would just kind of let's try to figure out what the story is, and then they would just write a script based on what they thought was going on on screen. Okay, so that that was Voltron, the original. I Voltron. mean, that's funny. That's kind of yeah. funny that they couldn't find one person <laughs> who knew Japanese. I know they couldn't. They yeah. couldn't hire one guy. Like how racist were the times? <laughs> no, no. Like, but just we're... make it up. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It looks. It looks like something's going on yeah. here. I think that character likes that character. Yeah. This. These people seem to be feuding a lot. Yeah. Write that in. Write that in. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's so dope. that's uh, really funny about the original. So of course, uh, this Voltron, you know, uh, has to be better. Yeah, it's incredible. Is it anime? Is it like an anime? It's an, it's an anime, but it's really the animation's fantastic. I gotta check it and out. And the storyline is incredible. I gotta watch it. I I, yeah. I can't. I tried to watch the new Shira, and I wanted to blow my brains out. Have I have no in, I had no interest in seeing. Okay, that. see, that's it. That's what I'm afraid they're gonna bring back gargoyles as. It's like this super politically correct. You know, the the Voltron. I mean, they had a gay character. I don't care about that. Yeah, okay. They had a character, but I, I'm just saying, like, when that now identified as a man. Okay, but, used to be a woman. But the my thing with um, but that was okay too. With Shira, yeah, that's yeah. that's fine. They my did th- it tastefully. Everything was done, in my opinion, tastefully. I feel like Shira is like a bunch of fat, fat, angry chicks like yeah. shoving their politics <laughs> in your face. It's like I just want to watch Shira. Yeah. Shira could be gay, right. but I just like I have no problem with Batwoman. Yeah. Because that's part of her character and the, part the of her show, sh- Batwoman, and uh, on the WB, on the CW, and the character yeah, CW, yeah, yeah, be- but also the cost, but like that's part of her. Ca- it's part of her growth. That's part of why she becomes Batwoman. You know, yeah, I, I just don't care for the the um, like I think the acting is weird. Okay, I have I I mean I only seen a little bit of it. Yeah, but like I don't have a problem with following. If this show goes nine seasons, yeah, it's, and it's unwatchable, I'm still probably gonna watch it. Right. So I like I only watched the crossover, and the crossover was bad. Well, did you watch the first two episodes yet, or no? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. I just watched the crossover with her in it, mm-hmm. and it was it was really rough. She's a pretty bad actress. Yeah, yeah. yeah they probably should have kept, but she looks really good in the costume. I'm yeah, I'm sure she does. Yeah. Like she's she's getting the job done. Yeah, but it's just weird for me to like get into it. Yeah. It's hard. All right, all right. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's get <laughs> let's get into speaking of. <laughs> but but I have to say though, these movies as shitty as they as they've been, they've yeah. made the podcast way better because Dumbo. And Bambi are like that movie was really good, right? And the, but this is like really. Inter- I'll like, be honest, man. I, we ate food before we started watching. Yeah, I was having trouble staying awake. Well, I was having trouble staying. Okay, awake. Okay, I was wondering if you were looking at me staying awake. I was trying not to look at you. Well, but you know what I was doing? I, yeah. I was like at the first part. There's just really. All right, so let's get into the movie yeah, because okay. not people know what this movie is. Right. Uh, uh, Fun and Fancy Free came out in 1947, mm. and it's a package film. There's two stories. The first story is narrated by Diana Shore. Yeah. Which they Di- was also Dinah. I'm Dinah sorry. Sh- I think it's Dinah Shore. Dinah Shore. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you're right. Uh who was a famous pop singer back then in the 40s. Mm. She was also in the previous movie uh that I watched with Alan, the last movie Make Mine Music. Right. She was a big part of that too. So he was leaning heavily on her in this era. Um she narrates the story of this Bobo, which is a circus bear who goes to the forest and falls in love and has to fight a bully to get back his girl and shit. And then the second story is where the, the movie, I think, goes completely off the wall, is uh, Mickey and the Beanstalk, yeah, yeah. which on its own sounds amazing. Right. 
And then they introduce the uh, and oh, real quick, this guy is uh, Candace Bergen's dad. Um, oh, Ed, yeah, I didn't know that. Edgar Berg- Bergen yeah. and his puppets, and then he's alone in a in an apartment yeah. with a little girl, right? And Jiminy Cricket is just watching them like Chris Hardwick. Yeah, not Chris Hardwick. What's the, shit? I keep forgetting this guy's <laughs> name. Chris Hardwick's probably jerking off to it. Yeah, um, and it's just it should be great because it's right. mickey mouse and a beat and donald duck and goofy right. and it's the final time walt disney's gonna voice mickey mouse it's like i love these three characters they're, they're good. and it keeps getting interrupted by this fucking guy and his puppets it's almost like um it was like kind of like princess bride-esque yes but not done well no no i know it was like a bad run of it yeah like in the princess bride they they interrupt the storyline maybe once or twice Mm -hmm. and then i think what's i think this might have taken elements in a way because at one point um in the princess bride the the grandfather's like hey i'm trying to tell the story shut up yes and then he does that here yeah yeah and it's the same thing here but it's not as overt yeah because it's the guy with his puppets yeah and it's not. It's. I mean, ventriloquism. Is He's diff- moving his lips. It's he is, on but camera. It's difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. But and this guy way. was the most famous ventriloquist in the world at the time. Right. But he was mainly radio. So I think when they said we need you in a movie and we're doing long shots, right. He probably was like, "Fuck." Yeah. <laughs> I move my lips. Yeah. Because I'm on the fucking. I don't radio. think. I don't think they cared, man. There was yeah. nobody for the business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was the only guy. I like. You know what I loved that you just said that. He was the the top ventriloquist. How many were there? <laughs> I'm sure there was a bunch in like fucking the vaudevillian. Rooms. I mean, if this guy's moving his lips, how bad do you think the rest <laughs> of them were? He was the top. He yeah, was like he was legend. the top. I think his picture's still in Governors. Actually, I'm sure it is. I would not be <laughs> Governors surprised. Governors is a comedy club in Long Island. Yeah. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, what did you? Th- well, also Jiminy Cricket is in the movie, which because it starts off, it's Jiminy Cricket hosting the movie, mm. and then he kind of just disappears into the background and takes a back seat on the second half. Yeah, for the ventriloquist. What yeah. did you think of Bobo? The Bobo the clown, uh, the the bear. bear story. Bobo the bear story. Never heard it before. Me neither. I mean, it was uh, it kind of had like very big uh Madagascar type feel. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's where true. he escapes and now he gets to live. But then it, it's like a whole adventure now in the wild. Yeah, and it's like you forget that Bobo is also a bear, and I think mm-hmm. they do a really good job of kind of keeping him separate from the wild bears. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. But for the most part, I was like, this is kind of dragging along. It is very boring. Yeah, I think the big mistake they made, um, and I'm sure she's a great person, was having Diana Short narrate the whole thing. Why not have any? I think you need the bear to talk. You needed like the personality of these bears to come That's out. That's true because you know I you was, don't really know anything about Bobo. No, you don't, and you kind of want to hear his perspective, right? Yeah, and like I think having her narrate, yeah, it takes away all that. It takes away a lot, and right? It, it's just, and I get it. He probably had her do that. Well, Virg, they were going to make this into a movie, and then Disney was like, "There's not enough here for a full movie." And I think he probably thought to save this product, because it was a book he bought the rights to, mm. we'll have Diana Shore, which again is the equivalent of Ty- Taylor Swift is going to narrate yes, our new right. movie. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like it, she, she just, she just, it's just that forties like sing song voice. Yeah, I mean, it, it puts you to bed, man. Yeah. It's a lullaby. The yeah. whole thing is a long half an hour lullaby. Yeah, and it just is like it, it's it doesn't f- it sets a weird tone for the movie because like. You're like, all right, I'm. It's a new Disney movie, I guess, or whatever. Mm. And you're sitting there, and you're just like, this is fucking boring as shit. Right. Like, it's nice. It's that the animation's great. Yeah. The uh, character models are great. Mm. Uh, I think Bobo's design is pretty cool, but it's fucking boring. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, it's no. I'd rather, man. I'd rather be reading. Yeah. I don't need. I don't need anyone. Yeah, I'd rather read the storybook. Yeah, exactly. And, okay, so the first, uh, yeah, it's very boring. Um, I think they edited for TV. They edited her her narration out. And just basically like had music or something, yeah. Because they aired it on. They put they edited both these segments into like separate segments. Mm. Uh, let's get into that. What did you think of the Mickey and the Beanstalk stuff? Um, the thing is, the Mickey and the Bean. I remember that story. Yeah. I I mean it's it feels like uh kind of like you know remnants of like Grapes of Wrath, but mm-hmm. like a fun, interesting spin on it, right? Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. add the Beanstalk. They do all that. Uh, the the thing is that really just kind of takes it, me out of it is the constant interruption by the puppets. Yeah. At first, it's kind of funny, mm-hmm. but then after a while, it's like let's just get into this. I story. just want to see Mickey. Yeah, and it, yeah. this is the thing. It's kind of has it both. It has uh, a foot in each world. Yeah. At one point, it's like constantly with the puppets and this this birthday party of sorts, where it's only just the 
the ventriloquist and this random girl. Mm -hmm. Did they establish the relationship? No. No, okay. But Jimmy Cricket gets an invitation. Yeah. And it's sent by the girl. Yeah. And she says, I'm at the house down the street. And it just says she has this old man with his puppets on it. But I don't know why he's there with her. Right. If they're dating. This kind of, <laughs> <laughs> this kind of feels like uh, like they owed this guy, you know what I mean? They yeah. Owed, they owed him a favor. Well, or like he was so hot at the time, they're like, we could put him in this. Kind of like uh, Richard Pryor and Superman 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. like with Dinosaur, uh, Dinosaur uh, narrating the other thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like they're like, these two people have enough star power. Right. Well, they'll get us. Because uh, somebody, so after they made Dumbo's, uh, I think one of the animators said, we should make a Mickey movie. Yeah. And Walt was like, there's not enough meat on the bone for a Mickey movie. And then they came with this pitch. Mm. And he was like, all right. But I think he still was. Uh, see, I always wanted Mickey to have his own fucking movie. Has he? he I'm sure he has. No, he hasn't. He's still. had shorts. Yeah. This is the closest he's got. My God. This movie. I that always wanted Mickey cool. to have a movie in the Disney canon. I've what? never. I I always thought he had one. I thought this was the movie. So because right. when I, as a kid, so real quick background. Mm. Uh, when I was a little kid, they would show Dumbo on Channel Five uh, on Sundays every now yeah. and then. But Dumbo's a very short film, so the pad out the running time. They would have three cartoons before. It yes. was the same ones, and one of them was Mickey and the Beanstalk. Right. And but in that version, there's no narration. It is just straight. And I think there's a different voice. Right. There's some narration, but it's a whole different dude. Well, yeah, they chopped it together where it now makes a short cartoon, and it's good. Yes. Because I remember certain scenes when he's uh, when he's on the cork. Yes. And he pulls a thing. Mm -hmm. You see that in a lot of these short in that short. Yeah, and they used yeah. to. I think they also sh showed that short before. Or, um, remember Uncle Scrooge the Christmas Carol? Did you ever see that on Channel mm, Four? No, I didn't. You've never seen Uncle Scrooge's Christmas Carol? Y you're not here to throw stones at me. I know. Okay, <laughs> all right. That is one of the best uh, Christmas specials ever. I'm surprised. Wait, is Uncle this Uncle is Scrooge is Ebenezer Scrooge? This is made before Ducktales. Okay, this is like '83. Yes, I have. I have. Okay, I have, yeah. I have. yeah. They yeah. also show showed this before right. that on Channel Four, mm. and it was so good. So when yeah. I saw this movie, I'm like, all right, this movie's got to be good, right? Because you got half the movie's Mickey. Sure. And then this fucking puppeteer shows up. And I'm fucking pissed because, like, this is Mickey's big moment. <laughs> um, I, I've never, that's kind of, how long has Disney been around? Well, like 50, 60 years now? Oh, no. They started in the 20s. Oh, yeah. I think that for when they reach 100 years, yeah. don't you think the least they could do is give Mickey Him, a movie? I think, yeah. He's, he's nine, his 90th birthday was like a year ago. Yeah. His, yeah. A full length movie? I think Mickey should get a full length movie. I've yeah. always been kind of annoyed because Mickey, like, they always, the mouse, the mouse, the mouse. But this poor fucking guy doesn't do shit. Yeah. He, like, doesn't, like, his comic book never sells. Right. He doesn't ever have his own show. All he, he is, you know what he is? He's the MC of Disney. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's the James Matter. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that. That's not what I'm. That's yeah, not what know, I, was I love James Matter. Yeah, of course. But, but he just comes out and goes, "Hi, everybody!" And yeah. then like, "Okay, get out of the way." It's right. Like Beauty and the Beast. You right. Idiot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. He just doesn't get his shine. No, he doesn't. But he deserves his shine. He deserves. He. He's the reason why anyone knows this fucking company. And yeah, remember the the cartoon with the steamboat? Yeah, Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie, right. And I was so pissed that they kept interrupting him because I don't think I don't think Walt Disney had a lot of faith in him. Faith in him. You think Mickey. he was then why was he the why was he like the brand ambassador because of the company? Because he was the way to get in. He's he's the he's like the Trojan horse. You use Mickey to get in the house. <laughs> and it, the Trojan horse. And then you shove like and gargoyles sh and yeah. Marvel and right. Star Wars and well, he didn't have Star Wars back yeah, then. Yeah, they didn't have they didn't have a uh, But you shove like here's Marvel this, either. The, the park. Yeah. You want to make live action films. Right. Like you know, you people paid money for Mickey Mouse stuff, da da da, but he then he used that money like, well what I really want to do Actually no, Fantasia could also kind of be his movie, I guess. Although he's barely barely in that too. Who's I, you know I I've, I've never seen Fantasia. Oh, thank God. Yeah. You you would have been in a coma. I would have <laughs> fucking, That's a boring fucking movie. Yeah, I I had no interest in seeing it. Maybe maybe Walt is was right, man. Maybe well, do, Mick, Mickey Mouse doesn't carry it. I I mean, I think he does. I, I like he's very he's had some you know what I got to say, he has some he's had some good games. Right. He, like sure. The great uh, have you ever played Mickey's M Mystical Quest? Um, on the SNES, I have I have played it. It's, I like that game. Yeah, I I like the Goof Troop one better. Okay, well Goof Jack. Yeah, yeah. Goofy had a movie. Goofy had a movie. Yeah, and that was actually a really good one. Yeah, Donald had a TV series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have you watched the new Ducktales? 
Um, there's a new DuckTales? Yeah, it's been out since like 2007. No, I, I haven't. I haven't watched the new It's... Yet. This is the thing, man. I don't know what they're doing where they're messing up. An- How's the animation? Not that good. Yeah. And it's always dark. Right. And, um, like, it always looks like a cloudy day. Right. And Webby is, like, now, like, Webby is, like, basically Tomb Raider. Right. As a kid. And uh, the nephews all have different voices, which I'm annoyed by, and... What was the cartoon where uh, it was the Jungle Book, but they flew planes? Oh, Tailspin. Tailspin. Now, see, I think that I heard they were when the Jungle Book, the live action version, yeah. made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I was like, they should try to make the sequel to Jungle Book, Tailspin. Right. But have a real reason why, like, start off at the end of Jungle Book, Baloo's in the jungle, but mm-hmm. somehow end the movie with him flying cargo planes <laughs> in this sky it's, city. It's such an interesting way that they took They're like, oh, he's a pilot now. And they're yeah. like, wait, 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 the bear's a pilot? It's like, yeah. Yeah, he's a pilot. Yeah. And it's so interesting that, like, like, what happened? Did they build a Walmart there? <laughs> like, like, what? Were they just paved over the forest? Yeah, and, and like, and now, like, Ashir Khan is a mob boss. Yeah, and right? He, <laughs> yeah. And then, and you know what really stunk about uh, about Baloo being a pilot? He is a boss. Oh, yeah. He does. Yeah, Rebecca, he had the girl, right? Rebecca. Yeah, yeah the shitty single mom. Yeah, yeah. It was like, what is this? Yeah. What did this, Baloo do? Yeah, what, how did he. G- what debt did Baloo get into that he <laughs> owes somebody money now has to work flying? I just want to see plane. the end of it when he goes off with the humans. Yeah, someone like an IRS agent shows up to the forest like uh, Baloo, yeah. uh, you owe this much money. <laughs> like what? Yeah, he's and he he's, hasn't paid taxes in like he, fifteen years. Yeah, he's like Mogwai. Do you know anyone who get me a job? He's like, well, there's a, a flying job. Yeah, like, oh, I think I could do that. There's a flyer. He grabs yeah. a little pa- piece of paper <laughs> off it. That's so funny. Yeah, I, I want to see like a like an in universe. I want to see a reasoning as to why he's why he's pilot. flying planes and why there's now because like all the all the places are in the sky now. It's like yeah, a, yeah. It's like a uh, steampunk type. Mm-hmm. So like I just want to see like there's this alternate history where the United States did the steampunk thing. Now animals have to fly planes. I just I want to see that movie yeah. live action. I want to see that the they destroyed the Earth <laughs> as they yeah. see it, and now it's be they have to do it's like mortal engines. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but they're not the uh, blue. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, um, shit, how we get on blue? I don't know. Uh, oh, Mickey, you're talking about Mickey. Right. Mickey not being able Mickey to and carry. Mickey Don, and, and Donald Duck and all yeah. that. Yeah. So, yes, I, I do wish he would get his own movie. There, there's a couple, there's like some really good Mickey Mouse stories in the comic books they could make into movies. I mean, he's featured, man. He's, yeah. He just, he hasn't, he hasn't headlined anything. Have you ever read like the Disney comics? Like I never got into the Disney comics. I, I mean, I, I, I started, I, I read them a little bit. Mm. And some of the Donald Duck uh, comics could be really good movies. And same thing with the with the Mickey Mouse. Like, there's a Mickey Mouse one where he's a spy, mm-hmm. and it's like, I like, well, why not take one of those old stories and make it into like a little like, especially now with Disney Plus. The thing is this: I think that um, there's so much yeah. to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that there's a lot of people writing stuff, and mm-hmm. I don't think they've done the research like you have. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So if it's like if you wrote a new like based on the older comic books mm-hmm. that would make sense yeah then that it, would you could you do a, a like a mickey mouse action show right just based on the old comics well take, if you wrote that you could easily sell that to disney oh, especially yeah. with disney plus well, i'm sure I, I you know i almost guarantee you like five, like over the years so many people have come, come in and be like why don't we turn the comic books into a show and they've probably heard that pitch i mean they're so good people yeah yeah read. but like an actual script that's good oh yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. might be a different story that's true yeah, but um, yeah, but we'd have to have Mickey have the same voice and like, uh, who's now the person? Is it the same person who does the voice? N- um, no, Walt Disney got replaced. Actually, the guy was a sound effects coordinator who mm. replaced him. His name is what the fuck is his name? I for, uh, I had it. Now I lost it. It's That's fine. It's nobody, irrelevant. Nobody, nobody cares. So is that guy still alive and well? No, now there's a new guy. I remember in the '80s. I think the voice got changed or mm. something. There's a new guy. I should look that. Eh. We should look that it's up irrelevant. Right. I mean, it's, it's fine. They should give Mickey a movie, but it's got to be done well because Fun and Fancy Free is a rough watch. It's not good. I mean, I'll be honest, man. I uh, you've had other people watch Bambi. Uh, <laughs> you've had other people watch Dumbo. Mm-hmm. Those are great picks. Yeah, I well, really. I'm doing I got this in production here, order. <laughs> I, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. But I'm looking for interesting people for these. Uh, no, you're. Movies. I mean, you're damn right. I'm interesting, but yeah. that's, I'm not gonna. But I will say this though. That's that's a rough go. Thank it, God it was only an hour twelve. Oh, can you imagine if it was any bit longer? If it was a ninety minute movie, I'd be like, come on. <laughs> come on. I I was gonna ask to take a break. <laughs> During it, uh during wait, the bear the bear segment um yeah. I looked at my phone and I felt like we were we've been sitting there for like three hours yeah man yeah yeah, yeah. at yeah. one point I was like 
I was about to ask you, like, do you got like coffee or something? <laughs> Can I get like a, a, a line of, of Coke? Something. I needed something. I was falling apart. Well, you know why he made, just real quick, the mm. reason why he made like these movies, and I've said this before in the other episodes, but you weren't there for them. Mm. Uh, World War II, when that broke out, he lost distribution in Europe. Mm. And that's where he was making a ton of his money. Right. So he's like, okay, I still want to make these movies to kind of keep the go and keep everyone employed, but I can't really go all out. You think it's about keeping people employed or keeping his pockets lined? Keeping his pockets lined. Right. Yeah, until he could, sure. but he was holding Cinder. Cinderella, Peter Pan, Alice in Wonderland back mm. until like he could get the whole world again. Yeah. Until the war kind of blew over. So he would just make these movies and like so, you know, you had the idea for Bobo, you had the idea for Mickey, we'll combine it into one movie right. and bring in these two stars right. to help promote it. And I'm sure it worked. You know what the other funny I'm sure it worked back then, but it didn't it doesn't work now. Mm. The other funny thing is people always talk about how these movies are so timeless. And they are like Dumbo, Bambi. Those uh, are timeless movies because I think there are lessons. Yes. And the lessons are timeless. This movie was out of, I feel like this right, movie. What was, Bambi was like, I guess it's valuing, uh, you know, a loved one and then. Well, I think the Bambi one is about more like um, f- a, a, a human beings are assholes because they just keep shooting people. Well, I mean, that's, I guess that's the takeaway. <laughs> yeah. That was the takeaway that I got from right, But Dumbo's like, believe in yourself. Well, yeah, well, Dumbo's believe in yourself. Yeah, but like, fun and fancy free, there are no messages. No, the message is smack women, and they'll like you. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know if what part you were watching where you caught that, but I didn't catch that. He smacked, he said bears like when you smack each other. So he Did he say them. that? That's what that's what Diana Shore was singing. <laughs> she sang like a 90 minute verse on that. I mean, man, I was, I was tuning mm. out at some point. It was, but I, there's no like, greater lesson lesson like no. that's to be taken away from no and actually then, i think the lesson of bobo is just just run away from your problems right <laughs> <laughs> if you keep running you'll be fine yeah uh but the the, the like half thing is kind of interesting because the through line doesn't really exist no the through line is jiminy cricket who's in both and then he vanishes yeah but he's now just watching the second one yeah and oh this is what i wanted to tell you okay the commentary you, we were talking about this during the movie. Mm-hmm. You said, uh, you said it's like it feels like commentary, and I said, yeah, it's like we're watching the director's cut in real time. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Fun and Fancy Free, the second half of it, was the inspiration for Mystery Science Theater. That's interesting, right? The only thing I would say no is it it did this movie didn't come out on VHS uncut until like the late eighties, early nineties. And but I mean, when it originally aired. They, he never aired it. He cut it up as soon as it got out of theaters. He didn't air it the way this was. Oh, no one saw this. No one, unless you went to the theater and uh, uh, you had to wait until like the late nineties to see this. So uncut. unless you saw it in the theater originally, yeah, he took when the Bobo it? segment and he took the Mickey segment and he cut them up into like short little cartoons. He would air. He would put on the uh, Wonderful Disney. And he cut out the ventriloquist. He part. would cut out the ventriloquist. No, part. no, hold on a sec. The original part. When did that air? It was in the movie theater in 1947. 1947. Yeah. You don't... Th- no, it wouldn't... I mean... I, I guess- think he realized as soon as we came out, that was a horrible, stupid... That was a horrible fucking idea. Yeah. But he liked the Mickey shit, and he, he re-edited it... Re-edited... I keep fucking up that word. Yeah. To be on TV, but without them. Right. So I don't know if they ever saw that. They right. might. I I think it, the, the uncut version didn't come out until well after that show was on the air. Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although I could see that part if somebody... Knew, I could see the guy who wrote um, William Golden. Mm-hmm. I could see him knowing about this movie. And I could see that being where he got the idea for Princess Bride. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. I could see him knowing about this. Because mm. he's like kind of like... He really knows his movies and shit. Right. So yeah. then, yeah. I mean, you just... It does like... You watch something like this and you go... You, well, I start to wonder how much influence did it really... Did it have across the board? You know, like I think you, the influence was we can't do this shit again. <laughs> well, yeah, well, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, I like a story that kind of has a um, like uh, a halfway point, like it changes into something else. Yeah, the they don't do that now in movies as much. No, it's all one singular plot. Mm-hmm. But they do that in um, TV shows. Yeah, like you'll see where it's almost two storylines. Like a lot of the Marvels. Uh, shows on Netflix had two storylines. Mm-hmm. The yeah. first half of Daredevil was about X, second half about Y. Well, well, Punisher and Elektra, yeah. Right, yeah, right, right, right. Same thing with, uh, they did that with uh, Jessica Jones and mm-hmm. all the other shows there too. And yeah, like uh, uh, Punisher season two was about uh, inso- was about the curing insomnia. Right. Because that was a, did you like that season? season the two? second season? Yeah. 
I thought it was all right. I didn't really like it that much. It it seemed like it was just leftovers from the first. It just felt like, hey, uh, he's alive and he's over there. You gotta go kill him. No, nope. right? Why? Well, because we gotta pad this out thirteen episodes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was pretty. It was not. It wasn't a good idea. Yeah, to didn't really help. You're not interested enough. No, you're not. And that no. that actor, he's a good actor, but they didn't give him a lot to work with. No, no, no. Uh, the guy who played Jigsaw, right. and they didn't call him Jigsaw, and his scars weren't that bad. And it was just like, and his the doctor thing was anyway. Right, but th- it just speaks to a testament as to how bad fun and fancy free is, <laughs> because we keep di- <laughs> divo- you know, diverting into, into other things. Yeah, into, absolutely. Yeah, but, so but, you know, but you know what he 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 had to kind of make these movies to get to like you know Cinderella. Right, right, right. In terms of a stepping stone, I think that there's a lot of small individual learning things. Mm-hmm. Well, right. I think I think the bear was really well animated. I think yeah, that was Jack great. and the Beanstalk. Um, you know. That's an older story mm-hmm. from from Disney or no? No, that's a that's a fable. You know, that's a fairy tale. Oh, it's a fairy. So it has yeah. uh, has rights for anybody to use. Yes. Okay. So I don't know if you remember, but our everyone's favorite pedophile, Brian Singer, directed a, a version of it. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. Jack the Giant Killer was called. Oh, my came out. It only came out a few years ago. I gotta look that up. Yeah, I gotta see how because yeah, I don't. But I will say this though, Fun and Fancy Free is good because there's like little elements where you're like, this is a good, this is good to see. Like the the animation mm-hmm. of the of the bear was really solid, yeah. right? And uh, seeing Mickey, Donald, and Goofy together. Yes, was that great. was really cool. They're almost know? like the Disney Avengers, right? It was, yeah, I would say that. Absolutely, it was like very Grapes of Wrath area dystopia that they kind of put together. Yeah, and then they combined it with a with a fairy tale, a fable, and then you have this storyline, and it's like really interesting. You're like, okay, this is not bad. And then they learned a lot of mistakes from it too. Like one, don't intersplice ventriloquism <laughs> into this, right? Maybe yeah. define what the relationship between this old man and his dolls with this do- <laughs> with this girl. Can you imagine if they did this like ten years ago? They had Jeff Dunham constantly interrupt Frozen or something. That would be so funny. <laughs> with the, to with be Ahmed. honest, that, that would be kind of hilarious. That would kind of make Frozen better. Yeah, like if you have Ahmed the terrorist yeah. interrupting Frozen. Yeah. That is actually kind of funny. We, and should, I, we should make that. Or, uh, or um, no, actually, Otto and George would have been better. Oh, Otto and George would have been hilarious. Frozen. I want to fuck that one in the ass. Yeah, right, right, right. Absolutely. I, ventriloquism, man, I've got a, a newfound respect for. Not through this movie. <laughs> but just in general. Because, like, you think about it. Mm-hmm. We do comedy, right? We show up. Mm-hmm. There's no sound check, really. Yeah. Walk in there, check one, two, you're done. You got to carry this puppet with you everywhere oh. you go. Right? The, and if you move your lips, you're done. Yeah. You bomb. It's yeah, over. Yeah, you're already now. You're bombing. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if your material's good. Yeah. yeah, and if they could see you moving your lips, they're they're gonna yell at you about it. They're gonna call you out, and then then the material on top of that has to be good. Yeah, like I don't. It kind of makes sense why the art form has died out, and also why they're so angry. Yes, yeah. absolutely, because. They need to intensify the emotion so much mm-hmm. that it distracts you from the actual uh, ventriloquist. Yeah. So then this way the ventriloquist has more leeway to keep moving their lips. Yeah. If they, oh, yeah. 100%. If they do it by accident. Yeah. Yeah. No, because if you move the, mm. yeah, if you move the lips, you're fucking, you're just done. Yeah. That's very interesting. Ventriloquism is a dying is basically it's an almost it's it's like it's like the experts uh level of com- like you're like you you put comedy you know on the the video game they have normal hard yes. extra you're putting comedy in extra hard yeah cuz now you have to learn this insane skill mm-hmm. and then you have to be funny and no no so you have to throw your voice mm-hmm. let's just look through it uh, like a mathematical situation here. okay throwing your voice yeah which in itself is insane mm-hmm. very difficult yeah then you have to be an actual puppeteer. Yeah. That's oh. a separate skill set. That's a separate skill set. Yeah. So yeah, two skill sets. Two two difficult skill sets. Yeah. You know, I once talked to a puppeteer. They said even when the puppet's not moving, you have to be moving it. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah. You, yeah, cuz like when the puppet's breathing, you have to actually like make it breathe. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you have to be moving it even when it's not uh speaking. Wow. So it, it replicates lungs filling its air. Lungs getting, I mean, air filling its lungs. Okay, okay. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. so, okay, so we got the ventriloquism, we got the puppeteer aspect. Then you got to develop an actual act. Yeah. Isn't that... Which n- 90% of the city can't do. No. Yeah. People can't do that now. Yeah. And only, and they don't have to throw their voices or work a puppet. Yeah. They have to yeah. just stand there. Yeah. 
Then you have to also dress nice because ventriloquists, you can't show up dressed like me. No, you can't be a schlub. Yeah, you got to look like you have a really nice job. And the puppet has to be dressed well, too. So you too. have to find puppet clothes. Yeah, then you got to find puppet clothes. <laughs> Man, this is not an easy task. No. And it makes sense why. And then you have to go up in front of the grizzly pair and bomb in front of four, four people. Imagine being doing an open mic as a puppeteer, as oh. a ventriloquist. And everyone already loses uh, faith in you because yeah. they're like, you're a gimmick. Yes. So they you're call already behind you, the eight ball. They call you a prop comic. Or a hack. Or a hack. And you're, meanwhile, doing two physical things that nobody in that room could do. Yes. And uh, and then doing the thing that they, they can barely do. And they resent, yeah, and they're resenting and you. And they still resent you. They still you. resent you. Man, that's rough. That is rough. Right? That, yeah. So it's like you respect this guy's, you know? Yeah. If Not he's, this guy. No, man, come on, dude. That guy, I'm sure he was moving his lips, but... For the love of God, right? Okay. Where is your sense of sympathy? Okay. No, no, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the man is, he's trying. He's, he's trying. Two puppets. He's got to do two puppets, yeah. not seem like a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> and then also tell an entertaining story. Yeah, about Mickey Mouse. About Mickey Mouse, who never gets to have a sh movie of Yeah, and the movie's all, and, he, and Mickey Mouse's whole movie depends on this fucking guy. Yeah. Um. You know what the creepiest thing I ever saw was when Otto and George used to headline Caroline's. Yeah. When he would bring the puppet out, the puppet would have the, you know, the you know the black mask the Taliban puts over their prisoners? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The puppet would have that mask over its face. Mm. And one night he bombed, and I went to the back to give him a check or, or tell him something. And I get to the back, and he throws the puppet across the room. And it was so weird to see a ventriloquist treat the puppet like it's just like like it's this DVD set. Yeah. Like it's fucking like I just threw a DVD box on the floor. It was so weird because to me, ventrilo ventriloquists always, always seem like they're kind of alive. Right. But to see this guy just treat it with disdain, yeah. it was very uncomfortable. I wanted to say to the puppet, are you okay? See what I mean? Yeah. Do you see how difficult it is? Yeah. The fact that this guy treated this, he treats this inanimate object like it's animate, like it's an actual thing. And when he does it, you're affected. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, you, I had to leave. Right. I, was like, I can't believe you did just did yeah, that. Yeah, you threw the... It'd be the equivalent of like, just punch Jas well, Jasmine sitting on, on Kate Cornell's lap. Yeah. Like, just punch Jasmine in the fucking face. Right. Like, what? Yeah, it's yeah. nuts. Like, yeah. this sweet dog, yeah. and this guy, and that's his comedy partner. Yeah. Man, comedy is difficult, man. Comedy's comedy is so hard. difficult. And I, I think it's gotten easier. Yeah, now it's gotten easier. Yeah, because if people easier. if you, people don't laugh, you can just say that they hate whatever person yeah. you are. <laughs> right, right. You could blame a lot of things. You could blame a lot of things. People sure. are too sensitive. You right. don't like lesbians. You don't like straight guys. You don't like Something. Guys. Yeah, but the poor ventriloquist got, can't do any of that. No, I, I everyone did, already hates him. I did a show. Yeah. And um, this guy was hanging. Uh, you know, people put in FaceTime. It's mm -hmm. a show in Jersey, mm -hmm. and it's lightly attended, but whatever. And the guy, there's a ventriloquist there. His uh, dummy is sitting in the chair, <laughs> okay. like an actual person. Yeah. And I go, what's the dummy's name? And he he told me the name. I don't remember the name. But then I was like, oh, that's cool, man. And he's like, yeah, I got had to give him a chair. And I go, I get it. He's trying to be funny, right? You know. And I go, oh, that's cool. And then somebody from the other side of the room yells out, he's a puppet, not a dummy. That's mean. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So people are even woke with pu for puppets yeah, and woke, dummies. Woke for puppets. Woke for puppets. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can we call that? Is that the title of the episode? Well, I usually title it uh, the name of the movie, but right. I'll put AKA Woke for Puppets. Wait, okay, cool. I'll I'll, yeah. I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let me ask you this question, uh, Casey. This is a question I always ask mm. at the end. Um, you ever going to have children? <laughs> gonna have ch That's weird. That's weird. Well, That's there's a, a reason for it. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Um, you know, man, at the end of the day, I think it really, not it really, it does. It depends on what, um, you know, my my partner wants. Okay. If That's she good. wants to have kids, um, great. If she doesn't. Yeah, because so. it's her body. It's her body, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I think I'd like to have kids. I think I would. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Now, if you had a kid, would you yeah. show him this movie? <laughs> you think it's appropriate to show a kid this movie? I think uh, if you want to put the kid in a coma. Appropriate. Yes, okay. I think it's appropriate. Uh, I don't think it's good. No, that's the no. problem, right? It doesn't age well. No, at all. It, it hasn't. Yeah, it this hasn't. doesn't age like wine. This, and I think Disney this, knew that. This ages like cheese, mm -hmm. you know. So this is like really bad. Can I? If I saw this movie the way when I when I was three years old, I saw the Mickey and the Beanstalk stuff. I loved it. Yeah, thought yeah. it was fantastic. If I had seen it in its uncut form, mm -hmm. 
uh, I probably would have been like, "This is the worst piece of shit I ever saw." Absolutely. Even at three, I never watched it again. Right, which right. is those because the this poor Candice Bergen. I know you love your dad. But he just fucking ruins this movie. <laughs> I mean, he's probably long dead. I know, but I'm yeah. sure she'd be pissed at us just shitting right, out there, of course. And calling him a pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you, not me. I'd right. like to make that clear. Sorry, Murphy Brown. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown. <laughs> Great Scott. Uh, um, I would, you know, the thing is, I don't have any nostalgia tied to this. Me neither. The fun and fancy free, and I know other people might that are much older, but for me, I'd want to show in terms of... No, the, actually, I do have, because I like the Mickey and the Beanstalk segment, mm. and I completely lost it when I saw it like this. Yeah, I would say that my Disney love and wanting to show something to a kid of mine it would be gargoyles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my, mine would be Pinocchio, Bambi, and uh, Cinderella, mm. and, and also Little Mermaid and stuff like right, that. Right. Right. Stuff. Um, but gargoyles definitely. If I, especially if I had like a, a little boy who liked action stuff. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I have a Goliath statue. Oh, I have I... a Funko Pop of Goliath over there. Is this like the little tiny ones? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one as well. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one as well. Um. Uh, yeah. Those things. Those yeah. pop things. Yeah. Those pop things. I have a bunch of pops, guys. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Alingon Mitra gave it to me. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Because he, we both share. He's not the guy who died, right? No. Oh, no, okay. no. 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 We both share <laughs> an, um, uh, an intense. Uh, recollection and enjoyment of Gargoyles. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fucking cool. Wouldn't it be funny if uh, you just went, no, he's not the guy who died. This episode's going to come out in like five weeks. Mm. If between now and the five weeks he actually does die. <laughs> that's this <laughs> too grim, my man. Too I'm grim. sorry. It <laughs> would be uh, funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, it would be a twist of events. It would be like uh, breaking news yeah, on the podcast. Uh, yikes. He got ki- and he gets killed by a gargoyle? That oh, I mean, then we'd have a lot of questions <laughs> to be asked. And a ventriloquist. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. So thank you so much for uh, for joining. Do you, where can people find you on social media? Uh, social you? media, Twitter, Instagram, everything is all tied together. Um, if you look up through websites or even if the at, you put the at symbol, all day K C A. So that's the letters. So it's all day and then K C and A. And that's okay. my website. That's my Instagram. It's my Twitter. Just straight initials makes it easier. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure you follow him. And y- you don't have a podcast, right? Or you no, did? No, I used to. I just don't anymore. What was it called, by the way? I'm I have had curious. several podcasts. You had? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on the Guys from Queens podcast. I was on oh. uh, the Nice podcast. I did a night residential nightmares, which was about awful living situations. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, the reason why I like doing this podcast, I feel like this stuff is evergreen. So like... Like so let's say five years from uh, like not five years but like a year from now people like literally like my Frozen episode which mm-hmm. is probably gonna come out in a year and like that episode was awesome I want to hear the rest they're gonna want to listen to this because we're talking about like you know what I mean like we're not talking about like what happened with Shane Gillis or Nicole Arbor right. and Luis Gomez's feud we're talking about something that people are all can always you know what I'm saying like right people are always gonna want to hear like about all these movies so yeah the movies are timeless yeah we're not timeless no we're not timeless yeah. but i'm saying that and also what we're talking this about. also depends on you paying that monthly subscription to keep that stuff online oh i'm going to yeah, 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 yeah. like the, when you stop this stops well, i know this yeah. this episode won't be that popular unless right. like a lot of kunal fans yeah, show yeah. Up. Sure. but i think when people when i get to like stuff like frozen and when mm-hmm. i get to stuff like beauty and the beast <laughs> yeah that's when fans will come in and then they'll come back and listen to this and be like I gotta watch Fun and Fancy Free. Well, maybe no, don't don't do that, right? Don't. Do I that. mean, they could probably. I would imagine it'd be on Disney Plus. No, this isn't on Disney Plus. You sure? There's certain things Disney stills isn't gonna put out on Disney Plus. You think th- they're not gonna put Fancy for Fun no, and Fancy Free on? No. You sure about that? But how many people are gonna want it? Like this thing, d- d- it's kind of it, embarrassing. It doesn't it doesn't do anything to put it on there? But like it might, it be, people might be like, Disney movies aren't as good as I remember. You see this big, big piece of shit, fun you and think, fancy free. Right, you think somebody's going to watch, they're going to have Disney Plus. Yeah. They're going to watch fun and fancy free and then in a rage, call, uh, like cancel their subscription. I mean, Disney is very smart. The, the things they don't want you to remember, right. they're going to take away. Sure. I would be even surprised if Black Cauldron's on this thing. Which is the movie they hate the most. I will bet you a dollar that Fun and Fancy Freeze on this. Okay, we'll All find right, out. Cool. We'll find out November 15th. Okay, great. All right, so that's the podcast. Next week, we're gonna I'm going to do Melody Time with Andy Bucciari. She's not only a comic, but she also sings on uh, Broadway and in stage plays. So she has a unique perspective on a, on a really shitty movie. So thank you so much for listening. KC, thank you. For, thank, you. thank you for joining Either us. Either one works. Thank you. Okay, and have a good night. Yeah. Bye-bye.